Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 66, we'll take a look at the last strategy of enterprise architecture, something called the Durable Interface Strategy. As we saw in Lesson 62, the strategies describe the overall enterprise architecture team structure, whether it's centralized or distributed, and also how standards, whether they be technology, architecture, methodology, or process-based, are applied and governed across the enterprise. And we saw that there were four basic strategies of enterprise architecture, the prescriptive, classic, classic alternative, uh, the distributed, and the durable interface. In prior lessons, we've seen uh, details about each of those. In this lesson, we're actually going to take a look at the durable interface strategy. The durable interface strategy is one of those decentralized strategies where decisions and standards are delegated to individual business units completely, with the enterprise standards only defining how those business units interface with one another. And so, for example, to illustrate this, we still have a central organization of enterprise architects, but they don't do a lot. You see, each business unit has total autonomy on all of the standards they want to define within their teams. And those could be anything through security, through topology, through network, through hardware. They can make choices about going to cloud-based infrastructures or on-prem. Every decision is delegated to these individual business units. However, the enterprise architects and the central organization of the company still define one standard. And that standard is how each of the business units interrelate or interface with one another. Well, let's take a look at the durable interface strategy as an example, because here there are no enterprise standards, just how each business unit is, is interfaces or co communicates with each other. So now each individual department, business unit, whichever kind of, of segment there, division, now can have its own set of standards, any one of those. And like I indicated in the distributed strategy, generally each business unit will have its own enterprise architects who actually define those specific standards within that particular business unit. You know, this is all about integration architecture focus. You see, we've got all these departments or divisions or business units within the company and also kind of a, still a home office. And this is really works well for kind of those um, highly autonomous business units, those companies that are highly diversified but do need synergy between the departments. So each department necessarily needs to communicate with one another. And these are usually done through gateways and APIs and such. That's the standard across which all departments must adhere to. As a matter of fact, that standard also implies that we may have integration hubs or message buses or ESBs, enterprise service buses, uh, that the home office uses to gather information as well for maybe financial reporting or other kinds of reporting and metrics across the entire company. You know, a good way to kind of really illustrate this durable interface strategy is to go back in history to the late 1700s, let's say 1790, where we had maritime wars. And let's say two ships on the left-hand side all of a sudden they're sailing along and they see this really large ship that's on the right-hand side. The question is, friend or foe? Is that an enemy ship? So maybe we should prepare for battle or run away. <laughs> or is it a friend? In which case we can just continue to sail along in our direction or maybe meet up with them to exchange news. How in the world can these two ships, which are these two groups of ships, which are doing entirely different things, communicate with one another. Well, back in the day, that communication was done through flags. And you see, the flags form the standard for how all ships, regardless of what they were doing, what their mission was, could communicate with one another. It's a great analogy because that admiralty was that enterprise architecture team that built those flags, those standards. 
Now, the interesting thing here to describe the complexity of the durable interface strategy, and by the way, when I say complexity, this is the hardest enterprise arch architecture strategy to implement. Can you imagine ships all around the world and you see that upper right hand white flag with the red dot? upper right hand side. Well, the Admiralty decides that they don't like that flag and they want to change it to a green flag with a blue dot. Can you imagine how hard that would be to change? Because now, all of a sudden, the wrong response is done and all of a sudden we start firing on our own ships. And so distributing that kind of common interface standard is extremely difficult. It's also difficult maintaining those as well. As a matter of fact, let's look at the trade-offs of the durable interface strategy because this really does promote the right tools for the right job. As a matter of fact, if a standard across our organization, such as the distributed, says, no, we will use on-prem, certain business units may be able to take advantage of cloud, but it's not a standard that has been defined by the enterprise. Here, each business unit can do whatever it wants to do, not only from the software, but also the hardware methodology and also process. It's got entire, this, this, this entire business unit control. And therefore, um, this does promote that synergy between the departments. And so we get much better user and IT satisfaction. But notice here, the durable interface strategy does provide that synergy between departments, business units, or divisions. However, we get better user all satisfaction, but maintaining those interfaces is extremely difficult and error prone. As a matter of fact, it has very high overall cost, perhaps the highest cost out of any strategy that exists because now there's no economies of scale. And the other thing, it's really hard to control cost within this durable interface enterprise architecture strategy. So we've seen all four kinds of strategies. As a matter of fact, um, going back to Lesson 62, which kind of started this little series right here of enterprise architecture strategies, you can go and kind of get the background of each of these. And then Lesson 63, 64, and 65 showing all the other ones. Now, what we are going to do, everybody, is this. We're going to have one more lesson, number 67 in enterprise architecture strategies, which is going to be use cases. I'm going to uh, show you and introduce two different case studies and have you as an audience uh, be able to interactively decide which enterprise architecture strategies would be a fit. And that would kind of wrap this whole thing up in a bow to really not only st understand these, but also to apply them into real world case studies. You can get information about all the other lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday on my website, developer2architect.com slash lessons. I do have private training that I offer, and that is in areas of software architecture, microservices, and also analyzing architecture. And I do speak at a lot of conferences. I do have online training as well as public training. If you go to the upcoming events portion of my website, you can find where all those events are. And so this has been Lesson 66, the Durable Interface Strategy of Enterprise Architecture. Again, my name is Mark Richards. Thank you so much for listening, and stay tuned uh, in the next lesson um, for the wrap-up of all of these strategies of enterprise architecture with kind of a, a case study exercise approach. Thank you so much for listening.